Holiday movies and films are always different, have always been kind of different in a way that it's supposed to just make you feel good. It's not supposed to be too intense or too gripping. It's just supposed to make you feel good. And with other movies, we have horror, action, fantasy, all of those, their stories are more, you know, catchy, more hooking, more intense. And when you put them side by side with holiday movies, it's different. Holiday movies are more laid back, more relaxed, and you're just supposed to gawk at the characters and say like, oh, it's nice. Oh, it looks good. Oh, they're so cute together. And it's almost always like that. And there's not much, a lot of difference towards it. I think the last time I actually enjoyed a holiday film was Home Alone. And that's like way back in the 90s because Home Alone had that mix of feel good movie, but at the same time entertaining and at the same time dramatic. And there's moments where it's funny as well. And it's just a lot of those things that strike a proper balance. Nowadays, I'm not too sure if the holiday films are actually giving the same or just more of the feel good sense and not much of the actual interest. Hi, I'm MC Lorenzo and today we're viewing holiday films and Christmas specials. After digging through multiple streaming platforms, what I found is a bunch of Christmas specials from one particular star named Lacey Chabber. Lacey Chabber is famous for her Mean Girls film and the 90s series Party of Five. On 2015, she did a film called Family for Christmas. It starts off with her as Hannah and she is a successful reporter. Her life takes a turn when she wishes for her ex in a dream. The next morning she wakes up, she finds that her ex and her are together as husband and wife and they have two kids. Now most of the movie goes along with that line, that premise, and she finds herself as a mother instead of a single successful woman. That in itself had a lot of tropes within it and you know she's trying to do day in day out, she's messing up, she's not being a great mother. I was okay with seeing the daily mundane things that Hannah is trying to do, trying to be a mom, trying to be a wife, and trying to fit in that reality. But I was waiting for something more. I was waiting for a twist in the story, something different, a conflict that actually gets bigger, a conflict that actually is unresolved, you know, things, little details or little plot twists in the actual story, but nothing really happens. It was fairly predictable. Also, there's a weird message in the story where they tell you that you can't have a successful career and have a family at the same time. I'm sure some people out there have done it. Granted, it might not be easy as it sounds. I'm sure some people have done it and some people are successful. Or it could have come at different times, success first and then family, or family first, then success. It's just weird that there's a notion that you can't have both things at the same time for a holiday film. What would have been nice also as a resolution of the story, if the husband becomes a stay-at-home husband and Hannah becomes a career breadwinner for the family. That could have gone so much better as well. For a holiday film, I'm giving it four out of five because there's a lot of feel-good moments about the movie. But for a real movie, I feel like I'm gonna give it three or two out of five. On 2016, Lacey Chabber played the lead for the film A Wish for Christmas. She plays Sarah, who is a graphic designer who is kind of a pushover. She lets people bulldoze her and she doesn't really stand up for herself. On a Christmas party, she wishes to Santa that she can be more courageous. The next day, she tells everyone what's on her mind. She is more strong. She stands up for herself. 
At that point, most of the story revolves around Sarah taking control of her career through a campaign her boss is chasing after. Through landing that campaign and the client, she kind of falls in love with the boss. The thing about here is that it lacks a lot of conflicts that is gripping and interesting. Most of the conflicts surrounding the boss, which is having, you know, a tough time with his family and Sarah having this moment of strength every time she wants to say something. It's just the execution feels a little short. It feels a little lackluster again. I don't know. It's not that interesting. It's not something new. It's not something really fun. With all these feel good moments, it just felt like it was boring because it kept on being the same thing all over again. Here comes Sarah standing up for herself because magically she has newfound strength. And here comes the male lead who has problems with work who is too focused at work and doesn't really care about anything i wish there was more conflict in the relationship i wish the boss was a little bit more extreme and sarah a little bit more surprising it wasn't anything like that it was very average and i wanted the film to be really good but it's just it's not. As a Christmas film, I'm giving this two out of five because there's a lot of feel good moments, but because there's too much, it tends to be a bit boring. As a real movie, I'm giving this one out of five. Lacey Chabber goes on to star on two different Christmas specials called Christmas at Castle Heart and Christmas Waltz. If you want something familiar, something you've seen before, something that doesn't really deviate from the rest of the others, go ahead and watch these two other films because they're kind of just the same. Not a lot of stress goes on, not a lot of conflict, and it's just how it is. You just feel good about the movie. Characters aren't really confronted with a lot of conflict and they mostly get the happy ending that they deserve. Another actor who has a lot of Christmas specials is Vanessa Hudgens, starting with her 2018 film, Princess Witch. Based on the book, The Prince and the Pauper, the story follows the same trope, wherein a princess and a baker switch lives. They discover what it is like to be on the other side and falls in love in the process. Now, I do love and enjoy this trope, but the fact is there's a lot of conflict that didn't feel right. Like there was a lot of moments or a lot of execution that they could have gotten far. They could have pushed the envelope and made the story a bit different, a little change in the story, a little twist, a lot more conflict that could have made it more gripping. But the story itself, the actual movie felt a little short and felt like it was trying a bit too hard. Though there are moments that I felt like I was enjoying it because it was fun seeing them being in a different light. That trope in itself kind of hasn't gotten old for me. For a Christmas special, I'm giving it a three out of five because I really did enjoy it. I just wish there was more to it. As a real film, I'm also giving it a three out of five. On 2020, Princess Witch again came out as a sequel to the first part. The story follows the princess and the baker as they switch again for the princess to find out what she feels about her commoner ex. Due to a lot of princess responsibilities, she doesn't really have time to sort out her feelings. In the middle of switching back, a third doppelganger comes in and switches with the princess. And now people mistake the doppelganger as the princess and things kind of get messy from there. I like that there's a third doppelganger in the mix and makes things even messier. But what I didn't really like is that the execution felt a little short. If we have a villain in the face of the third doppelganger, it should have been more villainous. It should have been more scheming, but instead we see something that's really subpar and just average. And I wish it was more diabolical in that sense. We also lose that sense of self-discovery. In the first film, we see the baker and the princess discover what it is like to be common and royalty. But in this next film, we just don't. We don't see the third doppelganger discovering what it is like to be royalty, to be up there having responsibilities. We also don't see what is it like for a princess to discover someone who is trying to make ends meet, who is trying to pretend and fool everybody that she's okay, but she's not. 
you know, that kind of throw up in the story was really something special if they had brought about it. There's just a lot of executions and storylines that could have been made into the film that could have made it so much better, so much entertaining to watch, but it didn't. So I'm giving it two out of five. And then on 2021, Princess Switch 3 comes out and it feels like since I didn't really enjoy Switch 2, there's nothing more that I could enjoy about Switch 3. But if you still enjoy Switch 2 after watching it, I'm sure you'll still enjoy Switch 3. On 2020, Holiday came out. It follows Jackson and Sloan who have a very tough time in spending holidays every year. For Jackson, he is always with women he doesn't like who are weird women he's really not serious with. For Sloan, she is always the single one in the family. The two of them meet at a party and discover that both of them have the same troubles. To make it easier for them, they make themselves as their temporary dates for every holiday. The story revolves around them going into that process every holiday and finally falling in love. It reminds me a lot of No Strings Attached and Friends with Benefits, but instead of being an overnight thing, a casual thing, it's more about family and getting to know the people and bringing the same person over and over again. I like how that kind of conflicts within the story and how they discover that, you know, being each other's person every year on out feels more reliable and they kind of fall in love in that. And there's some kind of tropes around here that makes me feel good. And I like that about the movie. What I didn't like about the movie is that the overused confessing in the public thing. I was really enjoying the whole story, the whole film, but when that happens, it just felt a little flat. It just felt like this again it was already kind of different already because we have no strings attached but instead of you know sexual encounters we get something really personal really family oriented i know it's a romantic comedy and this kind of scene happens a lot and i was hoping it wouldn't i was hoping it'll have its moments where it's different it's kind of different from the previous ones i've watched but we see that happen it felt like kind of drawn out kind of been done before and feel kind of unsatisfying but I really did enjoy the film. I think it's one of the best ones out right now if you are looking for a good holiday film to watch. I'm giving it a rating of four out of five as a Christmas film, but as a romantic comedy, three out of five. On 2021, Single All The Way comes out. Much like Holiday, we find ourselves looking into the character of Peter, who is always single. And that trouble is the only conflict in the story. Instead of finding a stranger to bring back home like Jackson, we find ourselves discovering his best friend named Nick. Peter brings Nick back home as a substitute date for the holidays. There's nothing much that goes on into the story other than the two discovering that they have feelings for each other. And that doesn't happen until a third party comes into the mix and brings out all these feelings and conflicts in the story. While I do like the fact that this is a gay themed Christmas movie, there's nothing really that goes on much into the storylines. The fact that there is a play involved and they get into whatever that's happening in the play, it just felt like a convenient way for the story to move forward without really actually moving forward. If you think that away, it becomes like a one hour Christmas special or a 30 minute Christmas special. This film feels like a mashup of No Strings Attached, My Best Friend's Wedding, Holiday, and a whole sorts of different romantic comedy films and holiday specials. So for that, I'm giving it a two out of five. There's nothing really original about it. And last but not least, we have Love Hard, released on 2021, starred by Nina Dobrev. What I like about this film is that it's very timely. We have a journalist who writes about her breakups and her failed dates in her dating app. Close to Christmas, she finally discovers a person that might actually be the one. They share a lot of details of each other and have intimate conversations. Then on impulse for her life and for a story, she flies all the way to the guy's hometown and discovers that she has been catfished. The story mostly involves around Natalie trying to get the real guy, which is Tag, and Josh, the catfisher, helping her towards her goal. 
What I enjoyed about the film is that it has a different take about things and a fresh new perspective about holidays. What I didn't get was the chemistry between Josh and Natalie. When they were together, their scenes, talking, it just didn't felt like I wanted them to be together. I just didn't feel like they should be matching up properly. There was not much any conversations or jokes that felt like it was fluid it felt like that i want them to be together despite the fact that they were catfish and the perspectives and their thinking are much different from each other i give this a rating of four out of five i enjoyed the refreshing take of the timely fashion of dating apps into the holiday films i really like that approach since it is a romantic comedy film if you found this video helpful and enjoyable do give me a like if you want to see more reviews like this in the future do subscribe that's it for me happy holidays